Good morning, Zion G audience. Thank you for joining us this morning. Uh, this week uh, and into the coming week, we are taking a very interesting journey. Uh, we're talking about the seven spirits of God. Uh, for me, this is, I, I think, one of my favorite topics in this season because I feel it's so critical to what God is doing and where God is taking the church. You know, for a long time, we've talked about the role of the Holy Spirit and we are not uh, denigrating or, or reducing the role of the Holy Spirit, but we are also acknowledging that God is continuing to give the church more revelation, more understanding. And one of the things that he is releasing to the church or giving us understanding about is the whole uh, aspect of the seven spirits of God. So this week, uh, I'll start talking about the seven spirits. Uh, today and tomorrow, I'll probably be just laying a foundation. And then uh, towards the end of the week, we'll start talking about the impact or, or, or the effect of the seven spirits on the life of Nehemiah. You know, I was, uh, uh, one day I was just listening to a message about Nehemiah and uh, I reached a point, I was just reflecting on Nehemiah and then all of a sudden, I, I can't tell you whether it is, a, I don't think it was a voice I had, but this awareness that Nehemiah operated with the seven spirits. And as I began to think through that, I began to think about the different aspects of Nehemiah's life and how each one of the seven spirits was instrumental in those aspects of Nehemiah's life. And it helped me cement the fact that if we are reformers, if God is calling us to be a people of reformation, a people who are building the new thing that God is doing, then we cannot do this without the help of the seven spirits of God. Uh, but let me start with Revelation chapter 4, verse 4 to 5. It says, Around the throne were 24 thrones, and on the thrones I saw 24 elders sitting clothed in white robes, and they had crowns of gold on their heads. And from the throne proceeded lightnings, thunderings, and voices. Seven lamps of fire were burning before the throne, which are the seven spirits of God. Now, this is not the first time we uh, hear about or we read about the seven spirits of God, um, if we are to follow it in a linear fashion in the Bible. Actually, if you are to follow it in a linear fashion, I think the first time we come to the seven spirits of God is in the book of Isaiah. And then in the book of Zechariah, Zechariah also talks about the seven spirits of God, uh, maybe the, the metaphors that he used for the seven spirits are not what we expect uh, but we'll jump into that and but revelation comes out very very clearly and talks about the seven spirits of god before the throne not on the throne and and this is uh, maybe one of the reasons why i believe that the seven spirits are different from the holy spirit because the holy spirit would be seated on the throne the Holy Spirit is a part of the Godhead, is a part of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Uh, but the seven spirits here were before the throne. Now, uh, those of us who are, uh, are, you know, students of, especially of the Old Testament temple, the temple of Moses, uh, we know that there were different elements in the temple. There was a bronze lever. Uh, we know that there was a table of shewbread. But we also know that there was a menorah. And that menorah was the last item that you met when you're going through the, uh, the, the Old Testament temple before you get into the Holy of Holies. It is sort of the last piece of light that was supposed to, um, for the high priest when he was entering the Holy of Holies, was supposed to sort of shed light as he stepped from this realm, in a sense, into, into that other realm. And that menorah was really a, reflect, a reflection of the seven spirits of God. Uh, but we'll come back to that at some point. In the book of Revelation, chapter 5, verse 6, we're just trying to highlight, you know, the fact that the seven spirits are, uh, the Bible talks about them and the Bible explains them. And so that when you begin to pray and to engage with God about the seven spirits, we have a biblical reference for what we're doing. It says, And I looked, and behold, in the midst of the throne and of the four living creatures and in the midst of the elders stood a lamb as though it had been slain, having seven horns and seven eyes, which are the seven spirits of God sent out into all the earth. It says, having seven horns and seven eyes, and these are the seven spirits of God. So the seven spirits of God are the horns and the eyes, the, the seven horns and the seven eyes of God. You know, horns talk about strength. So when you talk about being clothed with the seven spirits of God, we're actually talking about being clothed with strength. The seven spirits don't just come to, you know, make us feel goosebumps and make us feel, uh, you know, they, they come to bring the strength of God into our lives. The seven eyes talk about uh, vision. That's what eyes talk about. And eyes talk about the capacity to see, the capacity to understand things differently, the capacity to, you know, to come up with creative innovations and inventions. Uh, what the Bible says in the book of uh, Corinthians, what eye has not seen, what ear has not heard, what has not even entered into the hearts and the minds of men. And all of this come because of learning to operate under the grace and the impact of the seven spirits of God on your life. I'm remembering a story I was reading last week. I, I, I can't remember who I was reading, this, who wrote the story. 
but he was talking about how a friend of his developed a computer from light and this was in the u.s and when the friend consulted i think with either the u.s military or some people in authority they told him take advantage of that invention that you have because if you don't uh, take advantage of it will come and claim it from from you and this is many many years in advance of their time you know people are coming up with concepts and ideas many years in advance of their time and these concepts and ideas i believe is because their eyes are being opened to see they are seeing things that we are not seeing they are they are seeing round corners god is beginning to unlock technology god is beginning to give us understanding of technology that we've not had before and it, part of it i believe is because the seven spirits of god are resting upon uh, this generation my final scripture for today is zechariah chapter 4 verse 10 it says for who has shown contempt for the day of small things but these seven these seven will rejoice when they see the plumb line in the hand of zerubbabel because they are the eyes of the lord roaming throughout all the earth these seven are the eyes of the Lord. These seven rejoice when they see the plumb line. The plumb line was like a, a measuring line, you know? And these seven, their, their, their joy was to see Zerubbabel, who was a builder, having a divine plumb line, being able to build according to the standard of God, being able to build according to a pattern of God, being able to build according to the measurement of God. They were so excited because that was part of the assignment. The assignment was to make sure that whatever structure, whatever is being built, whatever is being established, is being established established according to the divine plumb line. So those are the seven spirits of God that we are beginning to talk about. And this morning, I just want us to pray. One of the keys I believe to activating the seven spirits in our own lives is that whole aspect of prayer. Just asking God, God, let the seven spirits of God rest upon me. Let the spirit of wisdom rest upon me. Let the spirit of counsel rest upon me. Let the spirit of might rest upon me. And as we keep praying and as we keep journeying through this uh, next one and a half to two weeks and asking God for the seven spirits to rest upon us, we're going to begin to see something tangible, something different as the manifestation and the expression of the seven spirits begins to work through us in the name of Jesus. Let's pray. Father, in the name of Jesus, we thank you for this morning. We thank you for the seven spirits of God. We thank you for the spirit of the Lord. We thank you for the spirit of wisdom and understanding, the spirit of counsel and might, the spirit of knowledge and the fear of the Lord. We thank you because the seven spirits of God rest upon us. We thank you, Lord, that because of the seven spirits of God resting upon us, Lord, we begin to rise as reformers. Father, Lord, we begin to see things in a new way, in a different way. Lord, we begin to operate in the strength, out of the strength and the capacity of God in the name of Jesus. We bless you for what you're doing in our lives. We bless you for this transformation and we bless you that we are a part of your agenda, not just for this nation, but for the nations in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you very much.